All right, guys, so I'm still out in California. We're shooting season three of Making It. And while I was here on set, I made this. This is a little leather bag I made to put some cameras in. My first time ever tooling leather. In this video, I'm going to voice it over. I'm going to show you how I did it. It's a little difficult not being in my typical New York shop, not having all the various tools that I would expect to use on a project like this. But I'll just show you how I did it. So enjoy this voiceover of how I did this. Thank you, Weaver Leather. Okay, I'm starting this project with a big piece of hide. This is veg tan leather. I really come to enjoy working with veg tan. It gives you a lot of options because you can dye it any color you want. Become super soft. You can texture it. You can do what I'm about to do here for the very first time. I am going to do some tooling for the very first time ever. And you can see I'm starting out with a really simple pattern. I, I didn't even measure this, honestly. I couldn't tell you how big it is. I just went by feel and I made this big wrap. And I'm going to put panels in the side. And here I just do in a super fast forward. I did a lot of research on, on a lot of different floral patterns and all kinds of stuff. And I got, frankly, I got intimidated. And I was afraid I was going to take a big piece of leather like this and spend a lot of time and really not come up with something that I was happy with. So I figured, let me get my feet wet with just doing a geometric pattern. And I looked at some blacksmithing stuff and I came up with this idea of this blacksmith grill over wood. And <clears throat> here I'm wetting the leather. And that's what's really nice about Veg 10. You could wet it. And I'm going over my pencil line that you saw me do with that tool there. I don't wish I knew the name of that tool, but that's what a lot of tooling leather experts start with and that's how you trace your line and you begin to define your image and I'm pressing really hard that's just regular water just uh, not hot not cold just like room temperature water I'm really making sure that I want to weave that image I want one to go over the other and then the other to go over that I really want it to seem like a blacksmith pattern in fact I'm going to be making a door for my house for my basement door and I think I might do exactly this but with blacksmithing and, and welding. And now I'm just trying my hand. They have lots of tooling leather tools, but uh, not many of them suited what I wanted to do. I just wanted to set the back around what you might call the cross members back. And that's exactly what I'm doing. This is like a wedge with a very fine texture on it. It's not smooth, but it just happens to be what I happen to have. I got lots of tooling stuff. I got a lot from Weaver Leather, of course, and I have over the years I've collected some from garage sales, but this is really my first time ever, ever doing leather tooling. And the although the water you see has dried off, it's still kind of soft. And now I'm showing you, this is the end of the Weaver Leather mallet that I'm showing you how I'm using that egg corn nut there, or what, what do you call it, that, that crown nut? I forget what that's called. I'm using that to push in. I wanted to try and create the idea that one was going through and under the other and over time they were all pushed down. And then with this, the back of this other tool and parts of the front, I started just to create a wooden pattern. So I wanted it to seem like wood was covered with steel. And like I said, I was really nervous to try and do a flirtily or doilies or patterns like you see some of these really amazing engraving artists do these days and also tooling leather guys I'm a big 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 fan of Paul Cox who also does a lot of geometric type of stuff take a look at Paul Cox uh, now what you see here what I had to do is I did not have a tool that was just a rounded thing being on set here limited tools not used to not having a lathe I spun this in a drill and I was able to cup the end of that dowel so it isn't super sharp. It I probably would have made it out of brass, but I'm just showing you that I just made that out of a piece of wood just to show you that you could make a pattern, crow's feet, initials, letters. <clears throat> and now this is going to be the interior volume of my snap closed leather case I'm making. And I wet it, wet it real good and gave it a sharp corner there. You see, I just stacked up a bunch of two buys and now this is where it gets creative because I wanted to put panels on the side. I initially thought I was going to try and bevel the sides but I just didn't I just didn't trust I was going to come up with something that really looked good. Again working on this TV set with very limited tools 
I had to kind of work with what I had. So I said, you know what? I've done this before in a video and I did a backpack many years ago. I did molded sides. Let me do the same thing I did in that video years ago. But this time, I have the education of doing it wrong the first time. So going into it now, I plan for deeper sides and just using some CA glue to hold that little frame down. Just a little activator. Now this is going to become garbage shortly after. So just two pieces of the leather and I'm going to wet them real good. I'm just kind of marking a little bit more than I need. Not a whole lot more, but a little bit more than I need because I'm going to wet that leather and push it into those voids backed up with the plugs of the wood that you'll see me trap in the clamps. Now I'm just wetting that real good. I didn't have to soak it. You see I just wet it just for probably five minutes, not even five minutes. And now I push that plug in there with a squeeze clamp, my, my favorite kind of clamps. If you know me, you know I can't stand these soft trigger clamps. I, I just find them to be completely useless. They were good here, but I, I go screw clamps all the time. And just had to bang that in there. And now I left room between the plug and the mold to accept the width of the leather. And I did a test. I did a test off camera with a small piece to see if that was going to be enough. Now here it is the next day. And I pull those plugs out and you can see I got a really nice shape. Now that I'm just marking the height that I need. And I have two beautiful pieces there. I was really impressed with the way they came out. And I definitely need to do some more molding of leather. Now you see here that's the, uh, the curved knife from Weaver, which is incredibly sharp. And you see I'm able to just chop what I need. And now I made these plugs and I used this, just a piece of 2x4 out of the scrap bin, cut it to fit inside there. And I also cut it to the right height, so you'll notice that the veneer is kind of paper thin because I, I cut it on the table saw. And it always worked better pushing into the cut. Now here you see I protected my fingers with that piece of scrap wood. Very important. That knife will really ruin your week if you're not careful with it. And just uh, chopping off whatever's hanging out there, squaring up the leather, and now you can see I've already taken that plug off camera and cut it shorter to accommodate for the depth of both sides. Just some PVA glue I got at the local craft shop. Again, don't have all my tools around me. This is canopy glue I got at Hobby Lobby. Canopy glue for the canopy of an airplane. But it is basically just PVA that dries clear. Canopy of a toy model airplane. So just squeezing that in, letting that dry probably for about a half hour. And you can see how th that plug comes to help me in the construction and clamping of this snap lid bag. Gluing that in, gluing that in, just putting that in again. And just clamping it for maybe about a half hour, 45 minutes. Being on set was very difficult. From day to day, I had no idea what time I was going to have, when I was going to have. I was working in between, trying to get started. Sometimes they shut the lights off on me. And, you know, the lights get turned off by a truck 25 feet away, so it wasn't easy to communicate to leave them on. So I just rolled with whatever was going on. Now there's the bag, and I stick the plug back in there to maintain the shape. And I did bring some tools with me. You see Jocko's knife there and a pair of dividers. And the dividers I'm using to set the stitch line. It's really important. Now you see me going really quickly here. That's two layers of, like, almost at least 9-ounce, 8-ounce leather and if I was to whack that fork all the way into it I wouldn't be able to pull it out so what I did off camera and I wish I would have shown it now in hindsight is I basically set my spacing and then with the single fork I went back in and I poked each one through with the single fork which of course if you buy a set of these from Weaver it comes with four it comes with the full set of five five prongs or six prongs then a three prong a two prong and a one prong so that's so you could make curves, and then also the thicker the leather you go through, it's harder to pull the four, five, or six prongs out. So you would go with the single prong. And you see me using my Leatherman to pull uh, the, the needles through. It's uh, really important if you're going to do this, don't bend the needles when they're in the hole, because you can crack them right in the eyelets. And I actually broke the end off of one of my needles. you got to pull them straight through. If you pull them through and try and curve up, you have a tendency to kind of try and yank it out you'll bend them through the eyelets. So now here you see me doing the other side. Again, not going all the way through, but by the time I start stitching, 
all those holes are all the way through because I used the single prong fork to go through. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't leave that piece of wood in there. So it's another really important thing. I was able to back up my cut or my, my punch in this case. Now it's just, this is, I guess you call this a saddle stitch and you just got to be patient and always give yourself a lot more thread than you need so that you have enough thread to tug on and keep some of that thread through the eyelet. Now I'm doing the end again. If I did not have those pieces of wood under there, this would probably be an impossible thing to do. I would have to back that punch up. It's really important. And you know, doing leather work and doing welding and also having access to woodwork around me, it helps facilitate my jigs and all the various different things I do. So woodworking has become an extremely important part of everything else aside from woodworking because I'm making jigs, molds, uh, rigs, everything I need. You just backstitch a couple times and typically that's pretty good but you can also tie it off. Sometimes I just backstitch and just put a little bit of PVA glue in there. Now this is dye from Weaver Leather which could also really ruin your day if you're not wearing gloves and this dye is just it just drinks it up. You see how much it is taking it in <clears throat> and I know it's going to leave evidence of a brush so I try and disguise the evidence of the brush by doing some sort of regular pattern and then I put a lot more dye on the raised pieces just to set them back and forth so you could see there how I'm going back over the raised pieces with the dye just an experiment I forgot to sand the edges so in the middle of all that I sanded it and then I went back and dyed it again and there you see it and then in a few hours it dries and now I'm back in my dressing room <laughs> because this is the only place I could shoot and the trichanth the this is good to seal the edges and I tried to apply it with a pencil I think right here and that didn't work so I just went right to my fingers and I put the trichanth on the edge of it trichantha gum I forget how you call it but there'll be links in the description and just rubbing that on there it's drinking it in and then that also seals the edge so that I could put a polish on it so I'm just putting that on everywhere and I'm just kind of rolling it. it's got a really viscous existence it's it's almost it's kind of snotty and now it's on there dried and now I have the polypropylene edge burnisher from Weaver and I'm polishing that edge I have one of these in electric at home but obviously I'm out on the set. So Weaver did send me some tools. They sent some for some of the guys to do crafts. And so I was able to kind of go and grab them. And now here I am. And the pattern worked out pretty good so that the X's on the front where I'll put the snaps line up with the X's underneath the flap lid. So the snaps will be there as well. Now this is some leather bomb and probably put too much on at once, but I was able to just let it dry and then buff it in, put it on everywhere. And with this, I find if you don't just soak it on completely, you end up with streaks and stuff. So I just put a lot of it on and then I let it dry in the sun. And then I was able to buff it back. The longer you let it dry, the easier it is to buff. If you start playing with it too soon, it's a little sticky. See, I was doing it too soon. After this, I just let it dry. See, I'm looking at it and I notice the rag is sticking to it. So I'll just let it dry. And here you see me cutting a belt, which I ultimately decided not to use, but I just wanted to show me using the belt cutter. I didn't have everything I needed to make the belt attach well. So here you see me punching holes, and I'm just showing you. I got a small package from Weaver. It's a package of 10 snaps, and they're black. And again, I didn't have all the hardware I really needed to punch a correct hole and to set the snaps in properly so I just leaned it on the wood and I ended up denting the other side of the head but I made it work with what I had and you see me do the front flap where it lands right on the graphic and I punched the hole for the other side through those holes and then I was able to put the wooden block in there to back up my to back up my punching of those as well and so now I'm setting those in place too, just uh, mushing over the, the stem inside there with the only tool that I had on set. And it works great. And then uh, with the block in there, it works great. <laughs> and then I realize when I take the block out, I can't push the snaps. I'm there right there. I'm like, oh, I realize I can't push the snaps because there's nothing inside the case. But 
if I'm always going to use it to carry something, that's not a big deal. Because here you see I fit a whole bunch of cameras in there. And then I'm able to push the snap shut. This was a learning experience for me. Definitely going to design a few more bags similar to this. I really like the dimpled insides. Gives you that nice thick edge. Thank you, Weaver, and thank you for sticking through this whole video. I appreciate it.